God, I am tired of trying, tired of the fight. Where is the transformation and new life you promised? I'm at the end of my effort and will. Help me, God. You promised you would. This was the cry of my heart on December 17, 2017. For over a year, I have been experiencing extreme mood swings, memory loss, and communication difficulties. I had several health issues and medications were being adjusted, so it didn't even occur to my husband Jim or me that there might be something else going on. Embarrassed, I was isolating from the world and began to imagine darker reasons. I am just a weak person. Maybe I'm deep down a horrible person and it's just now finally coming out. I lashed out at Jim too. When I was unable to follow what he was saying, I said things like, you're not explaining things right. As a Christian, my nearly lifelong relationship with Jesus began to feel imagined as doubts about whether or not God even existed filled my mind. I had a nagging sense I would soon die if I didn't change something. What needed changed, I didn't know. I had the first of almost 100 seizures two months later. Testing revealed a brain tumor the size of an egg that had slowly been growing for several years. My surgeon was able to remove all he could see. This was a success. I awoke from surgery with complete paralysis in my right side, but was able to walk again with the walker within a few days, and I was alive. There were new cognitive challenges that neither Jim nor I were equipped to handle, though. So I was transported to Rehabilitation Hospital of Louisiana for acute inpatient therapy. The moment that they wheeled me in, I looked around and said to myself, this is a place of light. I knew life, hope, and healing happened there, and I was excited to be there. It was, a, it was while I was an inpatient at RHI that I learned about and experienced the ability of the brain to heal itself. I made dramatic progress every day in strength, balance, and cognitive abilities. I reached all their benchmarks ahead of the goal date and re was released to Jim's 24-7 supervised care. I continued my brain healing journey as an outpatient at Northwest Brain Injury Center. Now, it's not uncommon for brain injury recovery to happen fast at first and then slow way down. The doctors had prepared me for this, so I knew when I started at NVIC, I'm not in a sprint, I'm in a marathon. <clears throat> I became a serious student of my brain in NVIC's neuropsych classes. I realized there that I had a responsibility and an ability to help my brain heal. The more I learned, the more empowered I became. One of the most life-changing things I learned in the program is called emotional regulation. Emotional regulation is a vital function of everyone's brain that is often weakened in an injured brain. Emotional dysregulation can interfere with our ability to reason and cause problems in every area of our lives. It can destroy marriages, fracture family relationships, and friendships, end careers, and even end lives. It can further damage the injured brain, and with my history of seizures, learning to regulation, regulate my emotions became top priority. The weekly neuropsych classes taught me a lot of powerful strategies I still use today. Now, I take awesome notes, and my work built book was filled with them, but there's a difference between writing down what we learn and actually applying it, right? During one group activity, I had a major meltdown over a minor issue. Even worse to me, it had happened in front of everyone. I was mortified. One of my therapists helped me to remember some emotional regulation strategies. With her support and the compassion of others in my group, I grew from the experience and moved beyond the issue. 
It was a pivotal moment in my recovery, my brain healing, and in my life. One of my favorite tools Envic gave me is called the energy scale. Our energy, whether we are too tired, too wired, or in balance, affects our emotions. I use the energy scale to check in with myself. If I'm getting too close to, e to either end of the spectrum, even in those times I've already gone too far, I apply the strategies I've learned to bring my energy toward balance. Jim helps me with this too. When he notices I'm off, he says, honey, are you okay? Or are you tired? That's his gentle way of reminding me to tune into myself. One of my girlfriends has also learned the signs and reminds me to pay attention to my energy level. I recently pimped out a bookcase at home and filled it with some of the things that help me balance my emotions and energy. I call it Tina's Wellness Spa. When my time in the program started getting close to the end, I was scared. The people there had been my safety net and cheer cheerleaders for five months two to three days every week. Even with all the things that they had taught me, I was afraid I couldn't do it without them. Depression had started setting in, thoughts like I am useless, I am a burden, and maybe my husband's family, this world would be better off without me, started plaguing my mind. Dr. Sam Backhouse immediately referred me to a psychiatrist who started me on a helpful medication. And one of my therapists helped me use a couple of strategies we learned to develop a plan. Since my natural tendency was to isolate and hide myself, the plan focused on my initiating regular social connection. I might have been crawling through that stretch of my marathon, but I had come a long way and was determined to stay in the race. I committed to the plan Graduation day came, and I rang that bell. The practice of initiating me meaningful social connection has transformed my life. I'm learning to let people see me not just in my up, up moments, but also in my down moments, when I feel like I'm a mess and have nothing to offer. Somehow this helps not only me, but in some kind of crazy way that I don't understand blesses them. I've shared with others the tool that I use for doing this and even contributed to an educational brochure about depression. Last year, a close family member became suicidal. Because of how Envic helped me, I knew to connect him to professional help right away. I shared a few of the strategies that had worked for me and with wise counsel found ways to support him that were healthy for both of us. He stopped by our house yesterday. He has hope and is working toward his future. Because caregivers aren't legally allowed in the neuropsych education classes that I benefited from so much, there was still a lot Jim didn't understand when I graduated from NBIC. He felt frustrated and powerless. So we are extremely thankful for the Brain Injury Coping Skills Program that allows caregivers to learn. Bix educated Jim on why and how my brain was different than before. This in-depth understanding helped him so much. Group members openly talked about their frustrations and what helped them. Jim also learned how important it is for him to take care of himself and he learned some stress management techniques to help him with that. He's taken up woodworking again and has resumed hanging out with his best friend, drinking lots of coffee and solving the world's problems. The program also gave Jim and I a shared vocabulary that helps us more easily talk about things. Bix helped us feel more like we are in the same marathon. We now refer to ourselves as Team Good Pastor. These programs trained us well for this unexpected marathon of grit, grind, and grace. I am testimony to the power each and every one of us has to transform our brains. Some say I am a walking miracle. Jim, my family, and friends would tell you 
that even though I still have challenges, I have grown leaps and bounds from the person I was even before the tumor. Through a brain injury that led me to end Bic and Bix, God answered my cry of 2017, and he's still answering it. I have been given new life. I am being transformed. Thank you all so much for letting me tell you my story. Thank you for supporting these programs. We are so grateful for you.